Hey everybody, Mike Iaconelli out here in the shop and I just returned home from an amazing trip to Spain and I got a chance to fish in a big tournament there. It's Europe's version of the Bassmaster Classic. It's called the Euro Cup. Um, amazing lake, amazing fishery, and an amazing tournament. And uh, man, I was lucky enough to win the two-day event and got to bring that first place plaque home for the United States. Very, very proud of this. Um, want to talk to you a little bit about the two primary baits I used to win the Euro Cup. I want to talk to you a little bit about the rods and the reels and line as well. Um, you know, the fishery was what I would call a desert style reservoir. Uh, a lot of canyons, a lot of bluffs, super clear water in the main lake. It reminded me a lot of um, a Lake Mead, a Havasu, um, you know, a, a desert impoundment. Had a lot of the same characteristics. Um, no submergent grass, no docks, hardly any wood in the water, but a ton of rock. Um, the other key, and this is really what helped me win the tournament, was identifying an area of the lake that held fish that were shallow and biting. And the key to that was finding dirty water. You know, the entire reservoir was clear, except the main river that fed the reservoir had dirty, heavily stained water in the back quarter of it. Um, that was so key because that dirty water put the fish shallower and really, I think, made those fish bite a lot better than those clear water fish. So uh, targeting dirty water and in that area, it was only about a two mile area of the whole lake, anywhere that river channel would swing to the bank and touch rock that was the last key to where the fish were located. You needed that channel swing, and you needed there to be rock there. Uh, boulder rock, chunky rock, didn't matter. As long as there was rock and a channel swing, that was the key. And then baits were really key. You know, going to Spain, I didn't know what to bring. I brought a flambeau uh, pack with a lot of lures and tried a lot of different stuff. And what ended up being key is lures that stayed on the bottom and contacted that rock. That was key. Chatter baits, spinner baits, crank baits, lures that stayed above the rock didn't get the bites and, and the other predator fish were attracted to those baits. So pike, zander, which are basically walleye, all that stuff, you were catching those on those baits. But if the bait was on the bottom, grinding in the rock, that was the key. On bait selection, I found two lures that really caught 95% of my fish. Um, and they were both lures that would grind in that rock. The first one was a power fishing lure that I use home in dirty rivers, ju just, like, uh, you know, just like I would here in the States. And this is a killer for me anytime that they're relating to the bottom and they're relating to dirty water. It's a half ounce black and blue missile jigs mini flip jig. Uh, if you look at it, you know that mini flip is compact. It's smaller than a normal half ounce jig. Uh, and it falls quick. It gets down into that rock really quick, stays there. And the other great thing about the missile mini flip is that integrated 60 degree line tie. Which, which comes through rock so well. Um, that was a key lure for me, and the trailer was just as key. Um, you know, I love the chigger crawl on this jig, and here's the chigger crawl that I had with me. It's a regular black and blue four inch chigger crawl, and I had to modify it a little bit to fit this jig. And so basically, if you look at it, I went down you can see the segments on this uh, Crazy Legs Chigger Crawl. And I went down three segments and I just cut it off or bit it off. So I take a big chunk of that body off. The other thing I did is when I separated these arms, a lot of times I like the extra length of the, of the Crazy Legs. 
But here I want it to keep it compact. And again, I, I didn't want to slow the fall. I wanted to let it get into the rocks and stay there. So I actually totally removed those crazy legs from the nose of the bait. And I was left with just a small little compact, almost a chigger chunk. And I took that uh, black and blue chigger crawl, modified chigger crawl, and I would thread it on there. And when you look at it now, it's the perfect little package. Uh, has those killer action, killer action on the fall, on the bottom, and was really able to grind in those rocks. The dark color was key because of that dirty water. Light jigs didn't get a bite. I power fished this bait, and I fished it on a casting rod and reel. And this was one of the neat things about this trip is I got to use the Abu Garcia Ike series rods in some of the European models. And um, the rod I used was the Abu Garcia Ike rod European version in the power series. And it was the 6.6 medium heavy action casting rod. 6.6 uh, medium heavy action casting rod is perfect. And I paired that with a 8 zero to one Abu Garcia Ike Revo. I wanted that fast ratio because a lot of the bites you'd be grinding in the rocks, they'd hit it and before you knew it, they were, they were five feet out. And so you needed that speed for line recovery. Um, I threw it on straight 15 pound Berkeley 100% trilene fluorocarbon. Caught about half of that, half of the fish that I weighed, including some of the big ones I caught came on that jig and casting rod combo. But, you know, the thing that happened is in that back quarter of that creek, there were only about six or seven really good channel swings. And after you'd fish it a while with the jig, with that bait, the fish would start to get used to seeing it. So I wanted to find another bait that was different did the same thing, would grind in those rocks, but something that was different and more finesse. And the other lure that really became my bread and butter in this Euro Cup, and this is the one that actually caught the big fish of the entire tournament, a five and a half pounder, came on a good old shaky head. There it goes right there, a good old shaky head. Um, I used a VMC 3 16th ounce rugby head. And you know, this head is great. Uh, it's a great shaky head because it's got an offset hook on it. That rugby style head, if you look at it, look at it, it's almost a cross between a round ball head and a football head. And that rugby style really comes through the rocks so well. So I was able to grind it in those rocks and not get snagged. That was so important, I never snagged in those rocks. And once again, integrated line tie, 60 degree angles, perfect. Um, so 3 16 ounce VMC rugby shaky head. And then the bait I chose because I wanted something that was a little bit bigger presentation than a normal skinny finesse worm. I used a standby. Anywhere I go, I always have these with me, including Spain. It's a Berkeley Powerbait General. It's the five inch, it's their version of a soft stick bait but I used it in a really amazing color called Ike's Magic. And I wanna show you, this is one of the Ike's custom colors uh, from Berkeley. And I wanna show you this thing. So when you look at it, normal five inch stick bait, but I want you to look at that color. It's really dark on the top, almost black with red flake. But then when you look at the belly of that bait, it's got that pearlescent blue sheen to it on the bottom. Really great lure, especially in stain of dirty water. Um, I took that five inch general and I just Texas rigged it. I'd go in about an eighth of an inch, I'd pull it out, go around the offset, that's so unique about that VMC rugby head, and then I would just make sure that bait's nice and straight. And look at that thing, it's beautiful. It's a five inch stick bait rigged on a shaky head. Same thing, I cast it around those rocks, I'd grind it, keep it on the bottom, grinding it, caught a lot of fish on that bait, including that big one. Um, and it was great as a follow-up lure. I'd make a pass with the jig, I'd come back with the shaky head, I'd go back with the jig, I'd keep going back and forth. Um, at the end of the day though, 
this is more of a finesse presentation and it's three sixteenths of an ounce. So I threw it on a spinning rod. Once again, I got to use one of the new European models of the Abu Garcia Ike series and I used the 7.4 medium action, 7.4 medium Abu Garcia Ike series European spinning rod. And that's a finesse rod. I paired that with the Abu Garcia Ike Revo in the 20 size, perfect reel for that rod. Last but not least, the line on this one, I used braid or fluorocarbon leader. I used 10 pound, that's the Berkeley X9 in the 10 pound test. And I used a 10 pound Berkeley Trilene 100% fluorocarbon leader attached to that braid. Um, Man, it was an awesome tournament. I, I don't know what else to say. Uh, it was um, an amazing event. To be able to go and represent the United States uh, and win is great. To be able to go there and use techniques and lures that I use in the States was great. And last but not least, to go there and be able to test the new Abu Garcia European versions of the Ike Rod was awesome. So I hope everybody enjoyed uh, this little in the shop talking about the Euro Cup win over in Spain. Try some of those techniques. They work all over the world.